coming up to the season of in bulk. Now in bulk itself usually falls around the 1st or the 2nd of February. It is a strange little holiday because we're not quite ready for spring and the weather can be quite changeable if you're in the northern hemisphere. February is coming up so it can be bleak. Uh, where I am, February tends to be when we get the most snow, though we have already had some snow. Uh, last week, we had an incredible period of cold, cold weather, and we had snow and it was freezing for several days. Today, and in the last couple of days, it's been positively balmy. <laughs> quite ready to uh, plant things and look at the, the landscape and the life that's coming through, but there are signs there. Yes, we'll get a lot of snow, but we can also start to see the changing towards spring. At the very least, days are getting longer and that's nice to see. Uh, where I am in North Carolina, it's still light, close to 6 p.m. In bulk is a Celtic festival, is influenced by Celtic systems. It was Christianized and became Candlemas, uh, which takes place at the same time. Mainly, this is the festival of Brigid, uh, sometimes pronounced Breed. And generally, she was the bringer of light. She was also the patron saint of lots of different things. She uh, was the goddess that was called upon for uh, breeding of animals like lambs. A lot of the recipes that you'll find are to the, for this time of year that are seasonal will be things around eggs and milk, oats and whatever things were available at that time. If you're interested in the food of this time of year, I highly recommend going to the website Gather Victoria. Gather Victoria is a fantastic resource anyway for old ways and, and pagan traditions. But in particular, they really focus on the food that was uh, eaten and celebrated with through the year, through the pagan year. So definitely check them out. I'll put their link in the description. Another really great person to follow on YouTube is The Witch's Cookery. She is an incredible uh, German-based witch. She talks a lot about the folklore from her part of the world. And she has a really great in bulk video that came out just a few days ago. So again, I'll put her link in the description. For many of us, we live in urban areas and often with paganism, people talk about being in nature and nature is sacred and that's absolutely true. But sometimes we have to be careful about the privilege that comes with the ability to be in nature. Not all of us live near woods or mountains or a beach. Many of us do live in metropolitan areas where concrete is the most common crop. If you are in that area, don't feel bad that you can't be in nature. I struggle with this a little bit because there's this assumption that the sacred and the trusative energies are in the natural world. That's understandable. But also, in a lot of pagan belief systems, we tend to think that energies and the divine is in all things. So if the divine is in all things, you don't necessarily have to take a big excursion out to a waterfall to feel the sacredness of life. So my advice is for in bulk, it's still quiet and, and still a, a time of things growing. And we are one of the few if the only species on the planet that does not live by the seasons. So I think one of the most powerful things because of this is to simply be outside or even sit by a window and just observe what it's like to be alive at this time of year. Just enjoy the sounds and maybe the smells. Uh, what can you see? 
What is different? What are the rhythms that you experience where you are? And in doing that, you're going to develop a connection with the divine wherever you are. For this video, I'm going to show you the full project of my in-bulk wreath. If you would like to do the in-bulk wreath, it won't take you very long, particularly if you've sewn before. If you haven't sewn before, this is a great video because it will show you the stitches that I used, how I transferred it and how I finished the final design so that it was ready for my altar. This in itself, just making this wreath could be your in bulk devotional and it will be a wonderful addition to any altar. The first thing you need to do is put your piece of fabric into an embroidery hoop. The design is about five inches, so you'll need a five inch embroidery hoop. Next, transfer your design. I'm going to use my iPad with the brightness set at the top, or you can simply hold a printed version of the design against a window and draw it that way. Then you take your design out of the embroidery hoop and turn it and flip it over so that instead of it being inside the hoop, it's going to be outside. Now comes the fun bit, embroidering the design. For this one I used three different stitches, whipped, running stitch, satin stitch and straight stitch. Colours you choose are up to you. I picked ones that would work with the background fabric as well as invoke the season. I began with the lettering in the middle. The lettering is in running whip stitch. So first you do a line of running stitch. Now comes the whipped part of the stitch. Beginning at the base of a stitch, you will pull up your thread and then weave it underneath that stitch. Then you will weave it underneath the next stitch, always going from bottom to top or top to bottom. For the snowdrop petals, I did satin stitch vertically, which means I went from the top to the bottom of the petal. For the centre of each flower as well as the base, I used satin stitch but this time going horizontally to give some nice contrast.
The final motif is a kind of star snowflake, which I did with straight stitch. To finish your project, you will need to trim the excess fabric away. Begin by cutting around your design, leaving about an inch to an inch and a half of fabric. Then, using six strands of embroidery thread, sew a circular line of running stitch through the excess fabric. When you have gone all the way around the design, pull the two ends of the embroidery floss tight, like this. This cinches all of your stitches and pulls in the excess fabric. You can then tie the two ends of the embroidery floss together to secure.